it's a beautiful spring morning in the mountains of southern Appalachia. It's kind of dreary, overcast. We're expecting rain later tonight and tomorrow. But today it's warm and I can hear the birds singing and just looking. I can see all the trees putting out their new leaves, see some blooms here and there. So it's really a lovely morning. Even though it's early in spring, I feel like we're getting behind already. The reasons we're getting behind, though, of course, are good things. A new baby, and then Austin and Corey getting to move into my brother Steve and sister-in-law Kim, their old house. They've moved and left the holler, so Austin and Corey are moving in it. But, of course, they wanted to do a few things here and there to, to change and, and make it kind of their own and make sense to do it before all the furniture gets moved in because then you've got to work around it. So Matt's been down there working pretty much every day. And I've been busy, of course, helping Katie and then just doing all the things I usually do, taking Granny to doctor's appointments and things like that. But I feel like we're getting behind on the garden. Our yard, I'm sure you can see behind us, terribly needs to be mowed. It's not going to be mowed today, maybe not even the rest of this week. We may have to bush hog it by the time we time we get around to it but I did come out this morning in the hopes that I could do a few things I want to this long I've got a long flower bed in front of the um, house kind of where my porch overhangs it's where my hostas and I've got Lenten roses and um, all kinds of things there are geraniums and different things and I want to clean it out it desperately needs to be cleaned out now, I want to go ahead and do it because my hostas are up about that high so before long they're just going to cover up all the things that I need to straighten up and clean out and then it'll it'll be even harder I should have already got it done but again we've had a very busy busy spring so I really want to do that then in the area where uh, we've got some spring things growing, our carrots and parsnips, I think, are coming up. And I've got some kale and some, what else have I got over there? Lettuce, lettuce over there. I want to weed that area really good. I've got some weeds infiltrating all of it. And then we never did put mulch over it. I think maybe we put mulch over the lettuce, but not over the carrots and the parsnips and the radishes. So I want to spread some mulch. It won't take long to do that because that's already done. And then if I have time, I want to plant a few little onions. We've got some spring onion buttons. Um, we'll use those as green onions and we'll plant them continuously kind of a little bit at a time. But I like to at least get a little bit in the ground today. And Corey for Christmas, I've got sitting over here. This has been sitting on my porch for two days. Looking down in there, I've not even opened it. It does have a little flap that's open though, so the plants can breathe. But for Christmas, Corey got me a couple of blueberry bushes. So I really need to figure out where to put them and put them in the ground. We put some last year uh, along these steps. We had like an established one, maybe two established ones, and then we put some there. So I may see if I can put them in between there and that way that would be an easy job to do and get that done because they need to be in the ground and I need to water them and just so that they can start thriving. So now that I've said all that I'm like are you crazy you can't get all that done but that's what I'm going to aim for. I may not get it all done but I'm going to start on the flower bed and then then move over to the weeding of the garden and putting the mulch out. When it comes to cleaning out the flower bed, I'll be moving all those weeds. I need to get those out. Here's some sticks left from last year's hostas. I need to get those out. There's some leaves, of course, that need to be got out. But in the middle of all the stuff that needs to be cleaned out, you can see some of the really beautiful things. There's some primrose. I think they're so pretty. I used to have another set at the other end. I'll have to check and see if they're there, different color. But those are the only ones I've ever had for years and years. I don't know why I don't buy more and put them in different places because I really love them. You can see how tall the hostas are getting. Of course, there's some more, some more sticks from last year. That's actually their bloom stalk from last year that I need to clean out. This lower end of the bed is really pretty right now because of all the Lenten roses blooming. Other things blooming, some daffodils, some different colored Lenten roses. So this part's really pretty. These daffodils that were blooming, they've come and gone. So I'll, well, there's one still blooming back there. One more of the paper white variety, really pretty. But I'll probably go ahead and just chop those down, cut those back. Even though you're supposed to wait for them to die back, I don't always do that.
Well, I finally got it done. Took me much longer than I thought, but it looks so much better. So much better. And while I was cleaning up the bed, I found a couple of things. You can see here's the, these hostas are just barely poking out of the ground. Those are my favorite. They're kind of a gold, goldish, bluish hosta, different than my green ones. I also found this, I'd forgot about this. This is a painted fern that little Quincy from Satterfields convinced me to buy last year. So I can't wait to see if it does anything, but it's growing, looks good. And I found a leaf way down here by the rocks. There's one. And then I found this little leaf. It's probably about three feet from that clump. So my blood root is spreading. That's really exciting because it's a great harbinger of spring and one of my favorite wildflowers. The Linton roses are about through blooming, but it really helped that I got in there and cleaned up around them and cut back some of the ones from the previous year get so raggedy and down they're now near the bottom and they just kind of lay down and then the leaves fall on them. So they look a lot better. One thing that is really spread in my bed up here, and I'm glad, is this geranium. Isn't it beautiful, the ground cover? And it has like a pink little flower. I see some up there about to bloom, but there's none blooming. Has really a, that strange scent that geraniums have. And my aunt shared this with me many years ago, probably 16, 17, gosh, going on 20 years ago, probably. But over the years, it's really done well in this bed. I have it in a few other places. And it's just pretty because it's a, a nice ground cover. You can see how lovely it looks. It'll stay like that all summer. And then it will bloom kind of on and off. Have one real flush. And then you might see some blooms later on. And it's really hardy. If I, I pull some up, I, you can see up here I started. I pulled some up accidentally. I just stuck it back in the ground right there. I won't even water it and it'll be fine. It'll grow. So it's a really hardy plant too. I've been wiping sweat off my face. So if you see dirt on it, that's why. Before I'm gonna go in and eat some dinner before I tackle the rest of my chores. But first, I think I'm gonna walk down the hill and see what Matt's doing at Corey and Austin's and see how things are going down there. Crab apple tree is beautiful. It's in full bloom. It smells amazing i can even smell it up at my house every time the wind stirs some of the blooms fall off and it's almost like it's snowing Lots going on today doing some moving and then matt's put the first coat of stain on the Countertops looking good so far. I guess. Matt wants to do more sanding on some places and then it'll take more coats of stain too. So it's a work in progress, but uh, man, I mean, I just think it looks great. So it is an improvement over old countertops, but it needs to be, needs some more work. Well, went in and had some dinner with everybody. We just had sandwiches, something really easy. And now I've come back out to finish my chores. I'm gonna start where I'm sitting on the ground here. This is where our, we planted the kale and the lettuce. I planted some onions, they're not doing that great. And then on further down is where the carrots and parsnips and radishes are. But I'm gonna to try to weed, weed these. The kale and the lettuce especially is doing really good. But they've got some dandelions and some other weeds growing right up through the middle of them. So I think once I get them weeded, that will help. That will help them grow and it'll be easier when it comes harvesting time for sure. So glad to have that chore done. That looks so much better. And I know it's gonna help the plants really grow. That rain that we're gonna to get tonight and later tomorrow, uh, later tonight and tomorrow, I know it will settle that mulch down and that'll be really good for those plants. Over here where we planted the kale and the lettuce, I had planted some onions that day. Me and Matt planted onions. And I've never really direct sowed onions outside like that. Uh, never really started them inside either till this year and those didn't do that great for us 
so I'm not sure we'll do that again but the ones out here they've kind of done about the same thing they come up kind of spotty they're real spindly I'm gonna leave them but at the one end where they didn't come up I, of the little square that I had made I went ahead and done me about three little rows and I'm gonna put some of our onions there that I, I bought you hear people say onion sets, but Pap always called these onion buttons. Um, I had someone on the blog this morning tell me that they had never heard of that, and they even Googled it and couldn't really find out anything. But that's just what, what we called them, on onion buttons. I guess maybe because they're about the size of a button. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to plant those and cover them up. And then I have accomplished everything, hard to believe, except planting my blueberries. So I'm going to see how fast I can do this. I know supper's calling me, calling my name. I've got to go in and cook some supper but see if I can get these done and then I'm going to check on the blueberry plants and maybe I can get those done too. Oh, that breeze feels good. I've got hot out here today. It's been warm. It's supposed to turn back cold though. We're going to have temperatures in the 30s by the end of the week. Anyway, it feels good to have those onions done and that rain tonight will be really good on them. I covered them up with mulch. That's what we should have. That's how I like to do it, but that don't always happen. But if you go ahead and cover them up with mulch, then when they grow up, start growing through the, through the soil, then they're already surrounded by mulch. When I went back with the carrots and the parsnips and the radishes, that was kind of, I had to be careful where I was putting it. I didn't want to just completely cover them up. So I tried to leave a little air getting to them so that they could grow up through it. But it's much better when you just, I think, when you go ahead and can do the mulch too. So I come to look at the blueberry. I didn't know how many or what Corey had got me, but I think it's only one. So I definitely can get it planted. So it's only one. One little one here. It's still moist. That's good. I can feel it through the, through the bag. It's been sitting on my porch for a while. Not, I mean, a few days, I guess. So, that will be, I wonder what kind it is. Let's see if we can figure it out. I wonder if it says it on the, oh, there's a little tag. Patriot, a Patriot blueberry. So, let's see if I can, I think I'm gonna try to put it along the steps here somewhere have to figure that out. Got the blueberry bush planted really quick and easy since it was just one one blueberry. I was going to share this with you, this shovel. This is what I like to use for things like that. It's a really small, I don't know if I could put my hand on it. It's small and it's really pointed. I don't know if it's called a trench and shovel, maybe. It was Miss Cindy's though, and Matt's brought it over from her house. And it's my favorite one to use because it's small and I can, I can manage it. Uh, and I'm sure that's why she liked it too, but it works really well for that. Speaking of Miss Cindy, this morning me and Katie were talking and so many changes in the last year, Katie was talking about just all the things that had happened since this time last year. She said this time last year, who would have ever dreamed, you know, the changes that have took place in our family. I started off talking about the really tragic and sad event of my sister-in-law Kim, her sister Chrissy, and her daughter Annie getting killed. I still just can't hardly believe it. I just can't believe they're gone. And I know that their family still just is devastated by losing them. And, so we started talking about that, but then Katie said, and then who, who would have dreamed that Miss Cindy would be gone? You know, if, if we thought somebody was gonna die, we would have all pinned it on Granny, not Miss Cindy, just because of her age and um, not being as good physical health as Miss Cindy. Miss Cindy went to the gym every day. She eat all the right food. She done everything you're supposed to do. And, you know, this time last year, we were just, you know, we were focused on it being dementia quickly after that learned that it wasn't dementia it was actually cancer that had went to her brain but who would have dreamed that she would be gone of course who would dream that Katie would have a baby nothing that Katie planned certainly nothing that we expected so many changes even to my brother Kim, uh, Steve and his wife Kim who would have dreamed they would have left I would have never dreamed that they would have wanted to sell their house and you know, uh, downsize now that they're empty nesters and just have a change, have something different in life. I would have never in a million years dreamed that. So it's just so many changes. 
And this time last year, me and Matt felt like we were behind in the garden. Of course, he was still working. Oh, and another change would be my, I'm gonna to get to grow corn. Who would have dreamed that? I wouldn't have. But we were, he was still working and we were, you know, worrying about Miss Cindy and having to spend more and more time with her and helping her with this and that. And it was just draining us and draining us emotionally and just so difficult to even get anything done outside. This year, we're behind, but it's for, uh, I have to watch it, I'll get teary-eyed, but for such joyous, joyous reasons. Mm. You know, Katie with the baby, Corey and Austin getting to move close to us, uh, something we would have never dreamed. Just such a joy, joyous. Even the corn, joyous corn. If you're someone that gardens like we do, like I do, and pay attention to the world around you, even if you don't garden, if you live in a place like I do here in Southern Appalachia, you see that change, of course, everyone sees it in their lives, just like I'm sure this time last year that you can say, name some of those similar, you know, things like I did, drastic changes. But in the life of a gardener, or even just someone that pays attention to nature, you can see those drastic changes. Seems like just yesterday that me and Matt were putting the garden to bed. You know, last fall, we were up there on the bank planting that garlic. And then here I am, you know, the winter it was barren and now here I am all of a sudden and the trees are putting out their leaves and the weeds are so high in our yard, our yard desperately needs mowed. Katie was also <laughs> telling me that. I said, I know I should be mowing the yard instead of planting and weeding. Uh, but if you're close to the, the good earth and you notice those changes too, it's, it's interesting to think about how that changes but also our lives changes. I don't know, there's so many things, deep and philosophical things you can think about when you compare gardening to life, to our lives, to humanity, I guess you would say. Really interesting to study on. I hope you enjoyed being with me today in the garden. I'm so excited that I, I just love looking at my flower bed now. It looks so nice and all that new growth and cleaned out and just trimming around all the Lenten roses really made them stand out so they're really beautiful. And then I'm excited to have got the onions planted and got that other stuff weeded and got the mulch down. I know the rain we'll get tonight will really, really help all of that. It's gonna be cold again by the end of the week, so my, my bright sunshine will be gone. But that'll be one of the last cold spells, maybe. We'll have a few more maybe during April. Of course, I've got to have dogwood winter and blackberry winter. I've got a few more little winters to go before we get to true warm weather. I'm always grateful when you stop by to help me celebrate Appalachia.